Hello, I'm Peter Houston, archivist at Mount Royal uh, University, and this is a short introduction to a collection that we have uh, on loan to the archives right now uh, of ancient Roman coins. So these are our imperial coins um, issued by the Roman state. Uh, here's just, you know, a quick look at what some of them look like. Uh, there's about 80 in total, uh, dating from about the 1st century CE through the 5th century. Um, and quite a selection you can see here, silver and bronze coins, uh, various denominations. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite quite an interesting collection. And this this video, I want to kind of give you a sense of, you know, what the collection contains, show you some examples, and also talk about how these coins, you know, some of them 2,000 years old, uh, can be used as, as historical sources um, to learn more about... about uh, the, the Roman state and sort of the values um, of that civilization. So <clears throat> just a, a quick word about, you know, Roman, the Roman state produced huge numbers of coins uh, during its existence, uh, you know, to facilitate trade um, throughout the empire and, and beyond actually too. And so uh, these were produced at mints, um, sort of coin factories, almost throughout the empire. A lot of them at Rome initially, but later on uh, they had mints, you know, everywhere from from London um, over to Constantinople and other places in you know, Asia Minor. Um, and uh, yeah, so so I'll, I'll just I'll talk a little bit about um, how to kind of or some ways in which these can be used as sources. First off, I should say that you know when coins are found by archaeologists sort of in situ, like at dig sites, uh, say in Europe and, and the Middle East and Africa, um, they can, they, they provide a lot of information. They can be really useful for dating a site. So if you find, you know, a coin of a certain emperor in, you know, a, a layer um, of dirt, uh, you, you can be assured that that layer, uh, it, it kind of gives you an end, uh, sorry, uh, not an end date, but kind of a hard start date. Um, for, you know, everything that you find in that layer. So very, very useful in that respect. Um, <clears throat> archaeologists often, too, will, will you know, when they find coins and identify them, um, they can be very useful, too, for determining kind of trading patterns in the ancient world. You know, you might find coins that were minted, you know, in, uh, in what's now um, Turkey or something uh, cropping up in... in um, France and in London, um, in, in uh, Great Britain, um, which might tell you something about kind of trading patterns at, at different points. So yeah, so that's kind of some of the uses of coins, uh, but again, when they're found uh, in situ. These coins, of course, uh, we don't have much provenance information about, for the most part, about where, where they came from, um, but they still have a great deal of information to kind of relay um, particularly if you start looking at the design of these coins, you see sort of what the Romans chose to portray on their coinage and how they chose to portray it. So we'll kind of go through some different examples and, and sort of look at, at coin design. Um, sometimes too, the Romans minted coins to commemorate uh, um, sort of historical events, you know, battles and victories, that kind of thing. Um, this is a really interesting one. It's quite a small little coin, smaller than a dime, made out of uh, silver. Um, this was issued during the civil war between Mark Antony uh, and Octavian, right near the end of it. So Mark Antony, in order to pay his his legions, um, he minted these coins in in what's now Greece, uh, uh, likely in the city of Patrae. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, the, the dates at the bottom, that refers to uh, sort of the date that this particular coin type was minted and the place name is, is where it would have been minted. Um, so, you know, 32 to 31 uh, of sort of before the Common Era, <coughs> which puts it just before the Battle of Actium. Um, you know, the decisive battle where Antony and Cleopatra's fleets were combined, or sorry, were, were destroyed um, or uh, by the sort of combined fleet of um, Octavian and his allies. So this is really interesting because it dates from just before that. And uh, you can see, it's a little hard to see because these coins were used for hundreds of years and often got pretty pretty worn down. Um, so, but, but if you can kind of make it out, we have uh, on here, uh, it's depicted a, a war galley. So, you know, a trireme or a bireme, um, like a Roman war galley, uh, one of Mark Antony's, 
and you can see a bit of the prow sort of on the right hand side. <coughs> so interesting that, you know, they chose to depict this. I think it's sort of trying to show off their, their naval uh, superiority before, um, of course, they, they came to fight at Actium and ultimately lost that battle, which was sort of the beginning of the end of the war. So this one is, is very neat, just tied to some very famous kind of personalities and events. Sometimes coins, too, can be some of the only sources that we have for certain emperors. So in this case, uh, th this is an Antoninianus. Um, if what we saw here, this is a denarius, kind of the standard silver coin of the Roman Empire. Um, just to give you a sense of its value, a Roman legionary, depending on the time period, would earn between one and three denarii of these silver coins, that, you know, one to three of these silver coins uh, per day um, in their service in the military. And then Antoninianus was, was like two denarii. I'm not going to get into all the, the denominations, but just know there's, you know, like we have nickels and dimes and quarters today, the Romans had, had sort of a complex system of different denominations of coins. This one, though, is, is neat. So it, it depicts the, um, uh, I've got here Gallic Emperor, but this, this guy was a, a usurper. So he was a Roman general of the Emperor Gallienus. Uh, was very popular with his troops and ended up uh, sort of rebelling against Gallienus and actually forming his own breakaway Roman state that encompassed large parts of Roman Gaul, you know, it's now France, Germany, Spain, and Britain, um, and, and stayed in power for about 10 years before his, uh, his own army killed him. Um, you know, a lot of this kind of thing going on in the third century in this, this time of real kind of civil unrest and, and sort of constant war. Um, but yeah, I was going to say some of these, these usurpers and sort of lesser known emperors, these are some of the few sources we have about them. Um, so I, I don't believe that there's actually any statues, uh, remaining of Posthumus. So, so this is like, this is the only source we have for knowing kind of what he might have looked like. Sometimes the, the portraits are pretty idealized, but you know, that's, that's kind of neat. Um, in some cases, too, with, again, lesser-known emperors, the coins might be the only source we have that, to tell us that, that the emperor even existed. So, um, again, you know, coins, uh, just because there were so many produced and so many, you know, ended up getting buried in hordes or, you know, being lost or, or thrown off bridges uh, as an offering to, you know, river gods, um, a decent number of Roman coins have survived, so, you know, sometimes... Sometimes they, they make for, you know, the only surviving sources. Let's look at the design of the coins now. So Roman coins, just like the coins we have today, they have two sides. There's the head, head side of the coin, uh, known by, uh, in, in numismatics, which is like the study of coins as the obverse. And then there's the reverse, which is the, the other side of the coin, you know, the tail side. Um, Let's start with the obverse. So in Roman imperial coinage, they would always have a picture of the emperor on the obverse. And this is a very uh, sort of classic example of that. Here we have the emperor Hadrian. Everyone knows Hadrian for, you know, Hadrian's wall. Um, and also one of the, uh, maybe the more successful emperors, that's sort of the, the apogee of the Roman empire in, this empire in the second century. So you can see here he's depicted, yeah, again, very classically for Roman coinage, you know, he's got this sort of muscular neck, he's got sort of a, you know, a hard set stare, he's wearing a, a, a wreath, um, like a, a laurel wreath, you know, a symbol of uh, victory, and also of kind of imperial majesty. Um, so, you know, everything about this portrait is meant to sort of instill in you, you know, reverence for this, this sort of august and, and powerful figure. You know, this is the emperor of Rome. Um, <clears throat> here's another example. This is from a little bit earlier, uh, the emperor Domitian. Um, and, uh, I was going to say, so not only would we have, you know, would the Romans choose to put a very powerful looking image of, of their leader on the coins, but they would also include an inscription that would contain a lot of the the titles the you know the imperial titles held by by the emperor so and again all to sort of add to his you know his glory and majesty um so in this case uh i mean it's a little hard to read on the coin but uh if if you were to read it you would get this this very abbreviated um inscription in latin uh, so Imperator, Caesar, Domitian, Augustus, Germanicus, etc., etc., which translates as 
Imperator, you know, kind of supreme commander, Caesar, Domitian, Augustus, Germanicus, which is conqueror of the Germans, uh, you know, alluding to his, his victories in battle, consul, you know, this important Roman office for the 15th time, censor for life, and the Roman emperors always love to have this. They put PP at the end, which was, uh, um, what's it, Pater Patria or something, father of the nation. So, you know, again, not only does the, the sort of depiction of, you know, the, the bust of the emperor glorify him, but also the, you know, the words chosen to, to accompany that, that depiction. Uh, over time, the, the sort of design of Roman imperial coinage definitely changed. So here we have a couple examples from the third and fourth century. Um, you know, th these centuries were a time of sort of, uh, you know, constant civil war and unrest, um, sort of invasion and, and real turmoil uh, in the Roman Empire. And I think you can see that in how the portraits of the emperors have changed significantly. So here we've got Probus, no longer is he wearing the laurel wreath. He's, he's dressed as a military commander, you know, Imperator, with his shield, a cuirass. He's actually got a, it's kind of hard to see here, but he's got like a spear across his shoulders that he's holding and, you know, his helmet. He's dressed for war. Um, so, uh, you know, probably meant to kind of intimidate enemies um, as well as sort of inspire uh, confidence in the military might of the emperor and his armies. Um, Constantius here, he's got, I'm not sure if this is a laurel wreath, um, or starting in the 4th century, they started depicting them with like a jeweled diadem, um, you know, kind of a jeweled crown of sorts. Um, but again, he's wearing some body armor there. I just really like this portrait because he, he looks very, very kind of real. Um, sometimes the portraits are more stylized, sometimes they're fairly realistic looking. But, you know, again, all of these are meant to communicate something. You know, they have this propagandic value, which is to sort of show you the majesty of the head of the Roman state. Now, it wasn't just Roman emperors that were depicted on coins. You know, sometimes, not, not as often, but sometimes <coughs> um, the emperor's uh, uh, wife or heirs might appear on the coins. So here we have one, Julia Domna. She was wife of uh, an African um, emperor, Septimus Severus, um, who, as you can see here, uh, was, was predominantly sort of an early 3rd century uh, um, emperor. But, yeah, a, a wonderful portrait here of her. You know, she doesn't have the laurel wreath, but she does. It says Julia Augusta. Um, so she does share the title, you know, her husband's title of Augustus. She is still, like, you know, the August one. Um, so, again, referring to her kind of imperial stature. And I just love the, the detailed uh, depiction of, like, her hairstyle. Really shows you kind of what... Um, some, sometimes coins are, are wonderful for... Yeah, they're depictions of, of kind of Roman fashion for, you know, the, the nobility and royalty. Or not royalty. They didn't like being called kings, um, but the imperial household. So so that's that's what you typically find in the obverse. These, you know, very strong portraits of, of the rulers. <coughs> and then if you flip the coins over on the reverse, you're going to see, again, uh, a, a variety of kind of propagandic images. Um, very common on Roman coins are, are uh, gods and, and sort of personifications of, of uh, virtues. So um, the one on the left here we have, this is actually that, that Domitian coin that we looked at earlier. So this is showing the other side. Um, and it says uh, Virtus Augusti, which is like um, to, to the Virtus of the Emperor. Virtus is uh, sort of a Roman, very masculine virtue that kind of encompasses I don't know, like prowess and courage uh, in, in sort of a public setting and for kind of the greater good. It can be on the battlefield. Um, often it would be on the battlefield. So here we have uh, this this image of, um, I believe this is Mars? It almost looks like a woman though. I, I Okay, I can't quite remember, but a very martial figure, you know, carrying a spear, wearing a helmet, um, and very much embodying this masculine uh, sort of virtue of, you know, of kind of related to courage and, and attributing it directly to the emperor. If you're wondering too, the SC um, appears on a lot of kind of earlier Roman coins and, and it, it basically means that like the Senate was consulted 
um, since the Senate, you know, even, even under the imperial system, uh, you know, they, they still went through the motions of having the Senate approve the issuing of new currency. The coin on the right is actually uh, an issue of, of Constantine the Great. This is before his conversion to Christianity. So we have here the uh, the, the god Sol Invictus, um, the undefeated sun, wearing this kind of spiky solar crown and holding... I know in one hand it's, it's a globe representing sort of the world, and I think the other hand is holding a small figure of victory. Um, so it says, yeah, uh, Sol Invictus... Um, I can't remember the, the Latin, but, but basically our companion, um, sort of showing, you know, this, this very important Roman God, um, and, and basically, you know, his, his, his close sort of alignment with, with the Roman state. <clears throat> this is the other side of that Julia Domna coin. It's sort of interesting they've chosen to depict a goddess on a coin, you know, with the, the image of an empress. So this one, uh, has, uh, again, you know, another uh, Roman, in this case, a Roman goddess, uh, Fortuna. So Fortuna Felicia, which basically means to fortune the happy. And there's a picture of the goddess here. She's holding a cornucopia, the symbol of, of kind of wealth and plenty. You know, even now at Thanksgiving, you know, we still have the cornucopia as sort of a symbol of, you know, the harvest. Um, in the other hand, she has a ship's rudder. So I think, you know, these are traditional attributes of the goddess. Um, but I think they are alluding as well to the uh, the sort of maritime uh, supremacy of the Roman Empire. The you know they're they're kind of economic. They were you know this ep economic powerhouse you know with all its maritime sort of trade routes. So um, you know they definitely coins would often celebrate yeah the economic might of the empire. Looking here too, you know, a very common for Roman coins to have sort of military themes. So here we have uh, two coins from the yeah, third and fourth centuries, but celebrating the, the military. Um, so on the left, we have, this is the reverse of that Constantius coin we showed earlier. And it says Gloria Exercitus, which is basically glory to the army. And you can see depicted two Roman legionaries with their spears and shields. And in between them, the things that look kind of like lampposts, those are their legionary standards. Uh, which, you know, every legion would have its own standard, and it was, it was you know, sort of this revered symbol of the, the power of that legion. Um, so, yeah, you know, a very strong uh, message here of, of kind of the, the overwhelming might of the Roman Empire, which, you know, by the 4th fourth, uh, the fourth century, uh, that was uh, sort of, you know, maybe not exactly the case. So you have to turn to propaganda to kind of bolster the image of your, you know, of your military strength. Um, the other one is from a little earlier. This is a, a coin of Philip I. Um, so Philip I was a, another usurper. There were a bunch in the 3rd century, you know, successful generals that would be acclaimed by their troops as emperor and end up, you know, and then they'd, they'd go and carve out their own their own sort of lands or, or you know, confront the sort of legitimate emp emperor in battle. So that was the case with Philip. Um, he kind of took control uh, you know, based on, on the loyalty of his troops. So that's what he's celebrating here, the loyalty of, of the soldiers that brought him to power. Fairly ironic, though, because Philip was actually murdered by his own troops uh, not that long after this coin was issued. So um, <clears throat> in the, you know, the third and fourth centuries with the kind of, uh, I don't know, the weakening and, and starting to be the disintegration of the Roman Empire, you see a lot of issues that are, are celebrating kind of the, the supposed stability of the empire. So on the left, we have a good example. This one, <coughs> another Constantius II coin um, from the mid-4th century. And the, the inscription says, Fel Tempra Paratio, which a very common inscription on, on his coins. It means basically like, good times are here again. Uh, and it has uh, the figure of the emperor dressed in military kind of uniform. And at his feet, to the left of him, there's two smaller figures. Those are captos uh, captured in battle. Um, and, and they are standing uh, significantly under a banner with the, the Kai Rho. Um, looks like a PX, but it's the first, it's the monogram of Christ. So the first two um, letters of Christos, uh, you know, the Greek for, for Christ's name. This is after the conversion of uh, the Roman Empire to, to Christianity. 
On the right, uh, we have a later emperor, um, Theodosius. Uh, this is <coughs> a very small coin uh, issued by him. Unfortunately, you can't get a really good sense of like how big these coins are. Some of them, I mean, most of them are, are fairly small, but some are, you know, I'd say between like a toonie and maybe smaller than a dime are where most coins fall. Um, these coins, though, both of them are fairly uh, poorly produced kind of coins. Um, it's interesting. You can, you know, again, talking about coins as sources, you can even get a sense of the sort of the... Uh, I don't know, the turn and fortunes of the empire by looking at the materials that were being used to produce coins and and just how like how debased they become by the fourth century you know gone were the solid silver and gold coins and the big bronze coins of the, the first and second centuries and uh now they're they're producing these you know cheap little bronze coins um sometimes like with a brush of silver to make them look like they're better than they are um, but yeah, it's, you know, they've fallen on sort of economic, uh, hard times. Anyways, going back to, uh, so the seated figure here is, is a personification of the city of Rome, Roma. She has, you know, a spear in one hand, again, this military kind of imagery, holding a globe representing Roman domination of the world. And then, tellingly too, there is beside her a small cross, again, Christian imagery starting to sneak onto coins, um, and the the inscription here says Con Concordia A V G G, um, which translates as Harmony of the Emperors. Um, the reason they have A V G G, wait, is that right? Three Gs is because there were three emperors at this time um, that were supposed to kind of rule the empire together. Um, so you know this this comes after much civil war, and so here they're celebrating. You know these two coins. It's like good times are here again, and everything's like harmonious. We're, we're on the upswing when, you know, actually the empire, well, especially the empire in the West, uh, you know, was, was sort of disintegrating. The Byzantines would go on for a long time, but. Um, one last thing I just wanted to end off with is to talk briefly about the legacy of imperial Roman coin design. It's had a huge impact on coinage throughout the world. Um, I mean, even now you could probably... If, if anyone still uses coins, you could fish a coin out of your pocket and take a look. Um, you know, the way the queen and I guess soon king are depicted is, is very similar to what we see on Roman coins from 2,000 years ago. Here's a, a, a modern example, but, you know, a slightly older one. So this is a Victorian penny. Uh, on the left, we have Queen Victoria depicted as a young woman. Um, and, you know, in a very classic sort of Roman style, that side portrait... She's wearing, it's, it's worn, uh, but you can kind of make out she's wearing a laurel wreath, just like the Roman emperors, and she has, uh, there's an inscription around in Latin, abbreviated Latin again, just like, you know, the Romans were doing. So Victoria DG, which means uh, De Gratia, by the grace of God, um, uh, Brit Reg is, is like Queen of Britain, FD, Defender of the Faith. Um, and then on the other side, this depiction of Britannia as, you know, a seated female figure in sort of martial, full martial uh, kind of garb. She's got a helmet, she's and like a very classical looking helmet, and a shield, and a trident, you know, the symbol of, of sort of her domination, Britannia's domination over the seas. So you can also see a lighthouse and a, and a ship. You know, all these, so, yeah, you know, even even modern day um, designers sort of look back to these Roman uh, sort of precedents when they're designing coins. Um, you know, again, they're they're very powerful kind of propaganda images. So, you know, if you want to sort of extol the virtues of your state, your military might, your your crazy good economy, um, you'd be well to to put these these images on them. One final word about these coins. You know, they kind of acted. Like, Roman coins kind of acted as propaganda posters. You know, this is something that were produced in huge numbers. By the end of the empire, they were producing millions of coins a year. Um, and they would change hands. So, again, you know, these these symbols, these propaganda symbols, are would be distributed throughout the empire and beyond its borders as well through trade. So, a really effective way to kind of spread these messages about, you know, the strength of, of the, the Roman empire. So... Um, I'll leave it there. Uh, that's my email address. If you would, if you, if you're interested in, you can always come up and take a look at these coins and others. 
Uh, if you go to the Archives and Special Collections, we're up on the fourth floor of the Riddell Library and Learning Center. And uh, yeah, we're, we'd be very much happy to uh, to show you the collection. It's really, really fascinating and just so interesting too to hold, you know, something from 2,000 years ago. So yeah, I, I hope you'll stop by. Thanks for watching.